the first time that I heard about the, the story of Last Emperor, that was in 1985, and I was in Russia. I was doing uh, the story of Peter the Great, another incredible great story about uh, one of the, the major czar, the innovative czar in Russia. Bernardo Petrucci wrote me <coughs> a letter about the possibility to uh, do this a, a film project about the story of the last temple of China. It sent me two books, uh, little books with the, I remember it was the yellow cover. There was the personal diary of as I was in Joropuyi. And uh, because I have the habit not to read any other book or script <coughs> concerning a film project while I'm filming uh, another project because uh, even unconsciously, <coughs> even if you don't want to, as soon as you start to read another story, either you dream, either you think, either you want to, your imagination never, can never stop, start to visualize the, ne the next story instead of the one that you are working on. Mm -hmm. Peter the Great uh, project was <coughs> done for American television in different episodes. It was a very long project, almost one year of filming. And we were two-thirds into film production. So uh, that, that was the moment that we arrived in Moscow. So I took this little book in the national um, holiday that, uh, in Moscow and I put it into the little uh, bookshelf uh, waiting for me to finish the project I was involved in. And of course I wrote to Bernardo, I said, Dear Bernardo, thank you very much, but uh, they are very, I will take care very much of these two books, but will not read till that I finish the present assignment. So every evening I was coming back from shooting uh, I was opening the door of the, of the <coughs> hotel apartment and I was looking up to see these two little yellow book and I was a kind of say hello. It was a kind of temptation every evening to open to start reading. But I resist the temptation because I don't want to uh, make something against the project that I was filming and I, I never open till the last week of the stay in, in Russia. I remember that in the last few days <coughs> of the filming of the Peter the Great, um, we had uh, four days of vacation because we actually we need only two days filming, very little things, just little details to finish one sequence, that's all. But uh, there was uh, the um, changing of the new president in Russia so they give it a kind of national holiday from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And uh, I took this opportunity that I was not thinking any longer at the project of Peter the Great because probably it was finished. We need just little detail. And finally, on a Friday morning, I wake up and I started to read the history of Zinjaro mm -hmm. Of course, it was not a script yet. It was just the, a diary. <coughs> Ma Bertolucci already wrote to me that in his mind, in the way that uh, the script was proceeding with the, his uh, <coughs> writer, um, uh, he was thinking that uh, the story could start uh, from the moment uh, that uh, the emperor was took uh, as a prisoner, practically, and put it into um, a kind of specific uh, section to rethinking all, all of his life uh, and, uh, um, and making a kind of resume on his life uh, in order to understand everything he did in the good or in the bad ways. So practically Bernardo was thinking to almost uh, like in a psychoanalysis happen that somebody is going back to the beginning of his own life rethinking of what is happening through the entire life. So the first idea that came to my mind while I was reading, I said, 
how, how can in, in cinematography visualize the different uh, moment of his own life. Uh, they have to have some kind of special, particular um, color vision, let's say, in his life. Uh, the right way you understand that this is not the present, but it's the past. It is one particular moment of the past. That was my first question. That period of my life it was the period when I was uh, trying to in keep investigating into the kind of uh, chance uh, that we can use colors in order to identify different moments of people's life or different character or different um, uh, kind of part of the story that we're supposed to visualize. That was my um, major theme, let's say, when I did Luna, which is, was really was the first uh, part uh, of um, the color research, let's say, I started with something very specific, the symbology. And I tried in Luna to uh, try to, with different color, explaining how each one of us looking at that color in one specific way according to his own life, his own um, behavior, his own history, let's say. So making any single color visualized from the karate point of view. The main second step, uh, completely new, was one from the heart. When I was trying to investigate the physiology of color, so the kind of reaction physically that we have in the presence of color, as I was explaining to you, is scientifically proven that uh, color has a great influence in our life because it's energy in one waving in one specific frequency. They are rubbing on us a changing our blood pressure, our metabolism. So we change the emotion according to the kind of color that are in front of us. This is something that is being proven scientifically uh, to every human being. Do, do some, there is no any personal connection, which is the symbology for the specific color, but this is the body reaction to every single wavelength. Mm -hmm. So my main theme was uh, how I can use the color spectrum to identify the different memory that uh, uh, Arzinjaro Puhi had. Because in the story, in the way it's written, more and more I was reading the script now, without any doubt, uh, he was forced to make his own uh, in investigation, his own research, his own analysis by the new government. He says, now you have to write What's happened to your life? Let us know from your point of view what you did when you were very young, uh, when you become uh, an emperor, uh, what you did when you become left the, um, the um, Forbidden City, uh, when you become again emperor in Manchuria, and so on and so on and so on. You know, the creation uh, journey sometimes is very short, sometimes is very long, sometimes is coming from something specific uh, um, example, sometimes it happened by just a dream or just a suddenly idea. Um, at the beginning, I knew that I have this uh, I, a concept, but I don't know how to solve it. Till one morning, usually uh, it's happened to me that uh, if I wake up around 4.15 in the morning, I don't know why, but later they explained it to me. Uh, around 4.15, <coughs> the unconscious has the first, 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 first contact with the consciousness. And, and they call uh, um, something that is called pre-conscious. So you start to be aware of something but you are not really completely wake up. You are not completely in a conscious state. It's almost the moment of balance between the unconscious and the conscious state. 
is something in between. And this is between, uh, it's, it's bringing to your mind uh, your doubt, your questions, your problem. And sometimes what's happened to my personal experience, uh, <clears throat> that's the moment where maybe you can find an answer. Honestly, I don't really remember exactly how it happened. Probably because one of those mornings I maybe wake up uh, or, or while I was still in, in sleeping and I, the first, 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 first thing that I remember was maybe the, the first scene when the emperor has been removed from his, his mother arm and it was taken away from the mother which is something very specific in, in, uh, in, in our life, probably, that I had an idea, and I said, oh my God, and if I'm making a relationship between the different, this is our life, and this is our different uh, ages, different moments of our life, if I take in light, uh, and I make the difference between uh, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth color, and I make an analogy or a relationship between the every single moment of our life uh, that can be visualized through one specific color. First memory, first color. So on, so on, so on. So the first idea uh, that came was the possibility to identify visually every single, because in the script, uh, the present time is in prison. And once in a while, he remembers something, and he's writing down. So I said, well, if I start with the first color, red, when he practically has been removed from his mother's arm, he practically has the moment that he is born as an emperor. And then the second memory, when he's living in the forbidden city, I use the second color, and so on, and so on, and so on. Maybe this can become very clear visually the kind of different stages, different emotion, different memory, different ages that the emperor had. That was the first concept. It was not totally clear yet, specifically put it down on the script, but that seems to me there was a, a principle, an idea they have to present to Bernardo before to continue to make it more specific every single moment of his memory with a single color, if Bernardo was thinking on the same direction. The second uh, idea that came to me while I was still in Russia was the fact that they, in reading the story, actually understood that, that the little child, step by step they grew up, uh, till one moment uh, he didn't know they was not any longer the emperor of China. He was uh, um, recognized as an emperor inside the Forbidden City. But outside, China already became a different, um, it was not under the, the, um, the kingdom of the emperor any longer. It was becoming a new society, a new uh, republic. Uh, but he didn't know. He discovered only at the later stage. The vision of the, of the film was the in reading one scene, there was uh, the little kid running and the gentleman behind him with the umbrella tried to run behind him to keep him in shadows. Of course, is uh, something that protects him physically by the very odd sun, but that can be interpreted in a symbolic way as well. 我印象很深刻的有这么一场戏，就是这个小皇帝在前面跑，然后后面有这个随从拿着伞在追他，然后想要给他遮阳。那么其实这个是从这个物理的角度来讲呢，是避免他被太阳晒伤。但是其实可以
they didn't know what's happening inside the Forbidden City for many reasons. Not knowing there is no any longer emperor, not knowing what's going on in the financial spending money inside the Forbidden City. There is a specific scene when uh, the tutor, the English tutor, <coughs> Reginald Johnston, noticed that the child needs spectacles to see clear. And he asked him to the Prime Minister to have his spectacles. And in the way it was ruled the inside, uh, from every board, every board, uh, every else, any uh, other body, even though they say, no, the emperor cannot use spectacle. And the uh, English student says, oh, you don't want to see clear what you're doing. Why are you using three million of gags every day, 300,000 chicken, 400,000 this, um, 5,000 this one, in order to feed one person. So you don't want him knowing everything. And uh, so practically, that's tell about the story that p the young emperor should be uh, kept in ignorance, in shade. So my idea was the guy that running behind the regular emperor, the keeping <coughs> shadows on top of him, <coughs> is not only because it's too hot, but it's, sim in, in the, it's the symbol to keep him <coughs> not knowing. Shadows means uh, not knowing. So need to be clear, the shadows. Need to be, uh, um, he should know. He should, he should pose question of himself. That's what shadows means. So it's better that he's been shaded. That he doesn't pose any question to himself of what is going on around. And I left Russia with these two main concepts. So I went, to, I went back to Rome. <coughs> and uh, I spoke with, I called Bernardo. Bernardo came to my house. We sat down and we start talking about uh, um, how to visualize the story. And I mentioned to him my idea. And uh, he was really touched about the, he says, no, no, I think it works to have some color tonality in different memory. That's we make clear visually <coughs> where we are in the picture. But I love the idea the, we have an emperor without shadows. Don't forget that Bernardo Petrucci, every film of Bernardo is mainly uh, done with the, a lot of psychoanalysis concept. Because Bernardo did this, a, a long series of psychoanalysis um, contact with the, with, the with the professor. Still today, I think he's continued to do psychoanalysis to know himself. So every, all of his movie is based in the, a lot of symbols, let's say. And he loved this idea to have an emperor without shade. So once I have the go ahead from the director, from Bernardo, I took the script and I started to make very clear to every sequence the kind of lighting I'm supposed to have, the kind of color tone I'm supposed to have. And, um, and more and more and more, everything became more and more clear to me. Uh, in fact, uh, I was writing down that uh, uh, the light on the little kid always supposed to be very soft, shaded, never incident light. They can create the shadows on himself. Only when the tutor is arriving, and they sit on the table, uh, they start to, he, the tutor start to clear to him what's happened outside the forbidden city. Uh, what, what he called the city of sound, because being into the forbidden city, it only he can hear only the sound of what's happening outside. And while they're talking, I have a very strong light coming, very gently, step by step, on the emperor. We see part of his face is lit very strongly with the inch of the light, the part is in shade. So now start the incident light, so the revelation of truth on him and start the question side of him. Part of his face is in shade. So I took the decision to start the picture when he is a prisoner practically 
of the new government of China. Uh, it was put into this um, camp of renewing the mind of people in a kind of gray, greenish tonality. Because gray is what is in between the, the color spectrum. Black, red, orange, yellow, gray, green, blue, indigo, violet, white. And the greenish is the balance between the two opposites. Uh, at the same time, it's, it's right at the beginning of color of knowledge. And step by step, putting together all the idea, always mm, double check with Bernard all the time. I thought it was fantastic the, what is already written when he is a prisoner in the station. He goes to the bathroom. And he tried to commit suicide. He cut his own vein. Because we have, from the beginning, all this gray, greenish tonality. And suddenly we see red blood into the sink. He watching the red, uh, almost uh, watching his own blood. He has the first memory when he was born as an emperor. When at night, the mm, soldier arrived. And they remove him from the mother arm. It's like a new cut of the American cord, like he's born for the first time as an emperor, not as a human being. And the fact that we film it at night, I can use the torches and the brazier to have this reddish color that was giving the first impression of the color spectrum in the first moment that they become an emperor. And every time in the story we will go back to present, we went back to the gray green tonality. New memory, new color, orange, second color. Orange is the color of um, our childhood. It's the warmth of the family, the warmth of the house, the warmth of the embrace of the mother. It's, it's practically living in a new house, for, but it's called the Forbidden City, the new family. It's not anymore father and mother, it's 3,000 eunuch. But this is his new family. This is new uh, house. This is the kind of environment. This is the kind of radiation they receive. This is the kind of world that he's living from now on when he's three, four, five years old. The third color spectrum is yellow. It's the color that uh, represents more the sun, the, the divinity, the emperor. The emperor has been dressed in yellow. For the, the yellow is the color of consciousness. It's the color of our own, uh, um, when we are around the, the age that we understand who we are, if you are female or male. <coughs> the color that where even the, the emperor is very young, so only three and a half years old, he realizes the power that he has because in running through this yellow curtain, he found, him, he found in front to 5,000, 3,000 people that bow in front of him. He cannot realize what it is, but practically see the entire population make a kotao in front of him. And the first thing they hear is the sound of, of the <coughs> cricket. And uh, he tried to rescue that they give it to him. So he has, as a little child, the feeling of, his own, the, of the power to be an emperor. The fourth color is green. It's the color of knowledge. It's the color that we represent our moment in life when we are learning, when we are student. It's the color that we start to see when the English tutor is coming. He's coming with an English, <coughs> with a car in the tinted in green. He's giving the bicycle to, which is another symbol of freedom and knowledge, to the color green. So practically, step by step, he's been uh, learned uh, through the in English tutor what's happened around the world, what's happened outside the city, what's happened the fact that he's not any longer an emperor. So he's practically he's nourished by new knowledge.